Hi, welcome to my channel where we incorporate wild foods into your daily life. Welcome, I'm so excited all of you are here today. We are gonna use one wild harvested plant and make three super simple recipes with it. Um, it is called passion flower. Here's a scientific name. I'm sure a ton of you have heard of this. It's often an ingredient in sleepy time tea bags, but it also grows wild here in central Texas. We happen to have a ton of it in our backyard right now. So let's go get some. Let's go. Hi, we're in our backyard and we have a ton of passion flower growing right now. As you can see, it's kind of everywhere. I mean, look at how gorgeous they are. They look like an alien or something. I'm obsessed with them. So we can use the flowers and we can use these leaves. This is a new flower coming out. And here are the leaves. And then this pink flower we're seeing is called rock rose. And the scientific name is that. And we're gonna use this one too, it's edible as well. And they're just kind of taking over in the best of way. <laughs> but yeah, we're gonna go ahead and harvest some and use it. I mean, look at them. We have a sweet little visitor. They love the rock roses too. This is one of our African sulcata tortoises. We think this is the boy. It's a little baby. Yeah. So everyone loves these flowers. There's also a butterfly called the Gulf Fritillary. We might see one. And it loves passion flower. It's its host plant. All we need to harvest these beautiful flowers and leaves are a pair of like kitchen shears, as well as some sort of like collection basket, whatever you'd like. And we're just gonna snip at the stem and snip some of the flowers too. So we'll just snip at the stem here. There's one, and then we're gonna collect a bunch of the leaves and snip those at the stem as well. Also go ahead and snip some of these rock roses also. Once you have all your flowers clipped, I mean, look how gorgeous that is. Unbelievable. We'll go ahead and go inside and I'll show you what's next. Look at that guy. Gorgeous. Oh, little bee. No fly guy. Something I really like to practice when harvesting is saying thank you and having gratitude for the plant once you've taken something from it because it is a relationship and it's really important to just, it's just respectful, honestly. So after I've harvested something like this rock rose, I'll just say thank you. Yeah, you can say it to yourself or out loud whatever you want, just some sort of gratitude because um, it, it is an energetic exchange. Yeah. So once you've harvested all of your leaves, you're gonna wanna go ahead and give them a good rinse. Just like that. Go ahead and shake it out. Oh my gosh, you can smell it. Mmm, it smells so good. And for all the flowers we harvested, oh my God, gorgeous. We're just gonna set them on the counter here and let any kind of like insects kind of crawl off and that sort of thing. You don't want to rinse them cause it'll ruin them. And then we won't be able to use them for what I've got in store for us. All right, so we have our passion flower leaves and the actual flowers. And I'm gonna show you three super simple ways to use the plant. So the first one is a hot tea. So we've got all of our leaves here and we're just gonna use this little kettle and we're just gonna grab the leaves and push them in here. You don't have to crumple them, I just like to. And we're just gonna shove them inside of here. There's like a little case here. We'll set it down in there. You can also just use a cup if that's all you have, but I like to stuff it Pretty full, you'll see. And then we'll grab our hot water right here and we'll pour it over the leaves. You don't wanna boil. You want a nice hot, you can see the steam maybe. <laughs> but yeah, 
a boil will, will burn the leaves. You wanna just have it just off of a boil. And then we will set this for about five minutes. Okay, our second recipe for the passion flower today is a cold brewed tea. So I just went ahead and I took some of our passion flower leaves and I let them air dry just in a nice basket on the counter for about five days until they're nice and crispy. And I just let them sit on the counter like that. And then I steep them in cold water. I just use the Tupperware. That's what I had, okay? So we just cold put, I put filtered water inside of here and those crispy leaves right here. And I just put it in the fridge overnight. So for our cold brew passion flower tea, we need this glass bowl and a strainer. We're just gonna set that on top. And then we're gonna use our container. We let this sit overnight and we're just gonna strain it into the bowl like that. There you go. So this is our cold brew passion flower tea. Oh my gosh, look, the color is so gorgeous. Feel free to add any kind of sweetener that you like. Cheers. It's so refreshing. It has a subtle flavor. There's no sweetener in this one. Feel free to add honey or whatever you'd like. It's pretty divine on its own though. I hope that you enjoyed this recipe. Let's move on to the next. Okay, it's like tea time today. Here's our hot passion flower tea. Grab yourself a mug. Oh, if you guys could smell this, it smells amazing. Oh wow, gorgeous. Here's the hot one. Mm, this one's just as delicious. So Eric, my husband, likes to incorporate this one into his nighttime routine. He likes to have a cup of it before bed because it has that nice mellowing effect. And I mean, it was free right out of our yard, so why not? Okay, so we're gonna use those beautiful flowers that we picked in our final recipe. I went ahead and made a cake using this box cake. Simple Mills is an amazing brand. We really love all of their products. And this is a gluten-free, dairy-free. Eric and I try to do gluten-free, dairy-free, but it doesn't always happen. And then I also used this really delicious icing, which is gluten-free and dairy-free. Also, um, I do love to bake and prefer to do stuff from scratch, but it didn't happen this time, and that's okay. And I made this cute little cake here. I'm gonna show you what we can do with those flowers. So here's our cake, and here are those flowers. Oh my gosh, okay. So we're just gonna place them on top. You can't really move them once they're there and that's okay. I like to, before I ice the cake, place them where you think they might go. Oh my God, it's gonna like drape over. So we're just gonna place each gorgeous flower and it'll stick to the icing. And you can eat these flowers and that's why we're putting them on top of this cake. So we'll just have each one drape. Oh my God, I'm like freaking obsessed. And you'll just gently press each petal into the icing so that it stays. Oh. God, we're not done yet. We're gonna get these rock roses. Pretties. We're gonna place those in between. Oh, wow. If you could have just seen how that stem from the bottom of the rock rose just perfectly laid into that icing. Simple joys, you know. The rock roses are edible as well. We'll just place them in those spaces in between the passion flowers. Wow, look at that. Just such a pretty cake. Okay, what is life? So beautiful. 
Oh, I'm obsessed with this cake. Look at it. Wow, it's so pretty. I love it. Oh, wow. Okay, great. Okay, one more. Last shot of this beautiful cake. Oh my goodness, it's so gorgeous. Thank you so much for stopping by. I hope that you enjoyed those three simple recipes with our beautiful passion flower plant. Um, my husband and I also wrote this foraging guide here. Um, it's a Falcon Guides book, and it has a lot of really wonderful recipes and helps with identification. And you can get it anywhere books are sold, and I'll link that below. We also have a Yopan Matcha product that you can buy on our website in these tubes, as well as we sell these jars at the Whole Foods in Central Texas. I really hope that you enjoyed this episode and I look forward to seeing you at the next one. Please like and subscribe so that I can keep creating these wonderful videos that help people incorporate wild foods into their daily life. Thanks again. Bye.